Imagine for a moment that the earth splits open. Everything you know and love is buried under a layer of lava, ash, and dust within seconds. An absolute horror scenario that some cities and inhabitants had to experience firsthand in the past. But if you thought we were immune to catastrophic volcanic eruptions today, you're mistaken. In reality, unimaginably large lava devils are currently slumbering underground, which have the potential to destroy the entire world. Are we possibly on the verge of a devastating apocalypse? Stay tuned and find out together with us. The Kings of Destruction When it comes to the question of the Earth's largest active volcano, there's no way around the mighty Mauna Loa. Located in Hawaii, the Shield Volcano stands a proud 13,678 feet tall, complemented by the 16,404 feet that extends into the depths at the same time. The most recent eruption of Mauna Loa is not that long ago. In November 2022, the gigantic structure began to emit glowing hot lava, which poured out in the form of several rivers even outside of the so-called caldera. For quick clarification, the term caldera describes the kettle-shaped surface depression that is formed either by an explosive volcanic eruption or by the collapse of the near-surface magma chambers. Considering the sheer size of Mauna Loa, it covers most of its home island. It initially seems hard to imagine that there are even larger volcanoes on Earth, which surpass the destructive power of the Hawaiian fire giant. And yet, some volcanic structures possess such immense destructive power that they make Mauna Loa look like a pitiful sparkler. Appropriately, these structures are referred to as supervolcanoes. Let's now take a look at what actually happens when these kings of destructions erupt and plunge the world into utter chaos. Traces of Destruction Have you ever heard of Lake Tapo? With a length of 25 miles and a width of 17.4 miles, this body of water covers an area of more than 239 square miles, thus becoming New Zealand's largest lake. But what event created the vast Lake Tapo, which reaches a depth of 525 feet in places? Well, to understand this, we have to turn back the clock about 26,500 years. Back then, a brutal incident occurred, called the Aranui eruption. When the Tapo supervolcano erupted, it spat out almost 288 cubic miles of ash and rock onto its surroundings over several months. As a result of this primal spectacle, the magma chamber beneath the volcano collapsed, creating a caldera covering 54 square miles. From then on, the rivers of the large catchment area began to flood the sink with water, ultimately giving birth to the impressive Lake Tapo. A little context, the eruption of Pinatubo in the Philippines was one of the most intense of the 20th century. And although tens of thousands of people had been evacuated from the danger zone in June 1991, at least 875 people did not survive the eruption. However, the volume of the Aranuri eruption exceeded that of the Pinatubo eruption by more than a hundredfold. Now, one might think that such spectacles are colossal and overwhelming, but what does it matter to us if a supervolcano erupts on the other side of the world? Well, those who think this way are under a fatal misapprehension, because in fact, the drastic consequences of such an event reach far beyond the actual scene. Europeans and Americans had to painfully experience the dramatic influence of severe volcanic eruptions on the entire world firsthand in 1816. Indeed, the eruption that led to an entire season being skipped. A year without a summer. Bountiful harvests, brilliant sunshine, booming nature. All these things were in vain in the summer of 1816 in Europe and the Northeast United States. Although the term summer in this case could not have been more inappropriate. While the thermometer in the United States fell below freezing at night and even snow fell in Canada, Europeans also complained about unusually low temperatures, severe storms, and heavy crop failures. At the time, no one could explain what was underlying the unexpected year of woe. In fact, 
It would take over a hundred years before this puzzle was solved by climate researcher William Jackson Humphrey. The dramatic climate changes were due to the brutal eruption of Tambora. Located on the Indonesian island of Sembawa, the volcano claimed 70,000 lives in April 1815. While the eruption reached a strength of 7 on the so-called Volcanic Explosivity Index, about 36 cubic miles of dust, ash, and sulfur compounds were released into the atmosphere. These substances then spread around the entire globe and formed a veil that shielded the incoming sunlight and dramatically cooled the global climate. The associated crop losses resulted in massive price increases for food. In some places, the price of grain even quadrupled. Consequently, severe famines broke out in Europe. In their desperation, people turned to leaves and plants, unripe fruit and snails. As a typical side effect of hunger crisis, the infectious disease typhus soon made its appearance. In Ireland alone, more than 44,000 people were estimated to have succumbed to the combination of hunger and disease. But even when the worst was over, the effects of the primal volcanic eruption were still visible to everyone. The event caused a decades-long change in daylight due to the sun's rays which encountered countless aerosol particles on their way through the atmosphere. Current Dangers Ok, granted, the year without a summer is now over 200 years ago. Haven't we come far enough to interpret the signs of an impending supervolcanic eruption in time and initiate effective countermeasures? Well, not really. Although these surreal structures have been scientifically studied for some time, we still have no idea how many supervolcanoes are currently lurking on our Earth. Besides the already mentioned Tapo in New Zealand, the most well-known representations include the Lagarita Caldera in Colorado and Yellowstone, located in the eponymous National Park in the United States. A scientific study published in 2021 brings a disturbing circumstance to our attention. We simply lack the necessary understanding to predict where and when a supervolcano will erupt. To fill in some of our knowledge gaps, an international research team examined an old supervolcano in Indonesia. At the end of the study, there was a slightly unsettling realization. Supervolcanoes remain active and thus highly dangerous for thousands of years after a super eruption. A similar picture is painted by the research results that were already published in the scientific journal Earth and Planetary Science Letters in 2017. According to them, eruptions with a VEI value of 8 occur every 5200 to 48,000 years, and thus 10 times more frequently than previously assumed. The unsettling part is that the Arunauri eruption was the last one so far to reach a VEI value of 8. Given that the eruption occurred about 26,500 years ago, it leads to the conclusion that we are currently right in the time window for the next super eruption. But how is it possible for us to detect a large mega eruption in time? Well, the information collected in the 2021 study mainly emphasizes one thing – we actually know even less than we previously thought. Devastating Gaps in Knowledge Because after a geochronological data analysis and thermal modeling, it became clear – magma still flowed out and pushed the hardened residual magma cover upwards, even 5,000 to 13,000 years after the super eruption. The problem? To estimate an impending volcanic eruption, scientists typically look at the liquid magma located directly beneath the surface. But now we know that super eruptions can occur even when no liquid magma is found under a volcano. It could simply be sleeping under the hardened crust. In other words, the concepts that we had relied on in the past need to be completely revised. Modern Apocalypse Let's consider for the end of our video an absolute worst-case scenario. A supervolcano unexpectedly erupts, transforming the surrounding landscape into an apocalyptic moonscape. What consequences would be associated with such an event? And how could our modern civilization react to it? Well, this question isn't so easy to answer. After all, the eruption of a supervolcano greatly differs from the ordinary eruptions which we are relatively frequently confronted. 
Generally, scientists' models suggest that such an event would unleash massive amounts of pyroclastic flows. These are the volcanic avalanches of ash, rock, and dust that sweep across the landscape at speeds of over 62 miles per hour. This scorchingly hot steam of destruction could extend up to 124 miles and form a layer about 656 feet thick. If the eruption occurs near the coast, it can also trigger gigantic tsunamis. In fact, the amount of ash spit out could be so enormous that it buries an area the size of a fully grown continent. How many people fall victim to a supervolcano eruption primarily depends on its location. However, the rule of thumb is, everything within a radius of about 62 miles around the volcano will instantly be destroyed. Even several hundred miles away from the direct death zone, the weight of ash would collapse roofs, massively impact infrastructure, and of course, paralyze air traffic. But even those spared from these consequences face another danger, microscopic volcanic dust particles that can trigger severe respiratory diseases. What applies to us humans can, of course, also be applied to nature. The deposits interfere with photosynthesis, and the massive layers can even buckle large trees and form a cement-like substance in combination with precipitation. As already mentioned, the consequences of a volcanic winter would be no less catastrophic. Crop failures and mass deaths of animals and plants could trigger a severe famine that lasts for years. Some experts suspect that even humans almost went extinct due to the eruption of a supervolcano. However, this interpretation of the Toba eruption, which occurred about 75,000 years ago, is anything but uncontested. Thank you for watching our video to the end. Feel free to leave us a thumbs up and subscribe if you liked it. What are your thoughts on these supervolcanoes? Do you think we could survive a super eruption?